What's up, everybody? How's it going? All right, where is I've made a dedicated shiny folder in my bookmarks, so I <laughs> I have I have a few things saved in there, including my checklist. So I've got to update this chat. I did a little bit of raiding uh, off stream. Also, my stream deck was not working the other day, so I, I had to update it from that too. All right. I don't know what possessed me to to do a bunch of raids, chat, but I got a lot of ones that like I've seen pick a peck outbreaks, but have I ever really wanted to do them? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, we're going to be checking out X and Y again tomorrow, chat. I've been uh <laughs> I plotted out my team. I'm going to use some real interesting Pokemon, Chad. I hope you're ready. We're going to do vanilla. And I did some I I did some testing to make sure it ran okay. Now oh, I got to get Kyogre out of my party. In my test, I, I I was already like, <laughs> just just testing the game and seeing the intro again because you got to go through all the. I wanted to test the battles because I was having a little bit of audio skipping, so I wanted to make sure I tested the battles and you have to get through all the initial dialogue. And I love how Serena. I I just went with Callum because I was just doing testing. Serena and Shauna just awkwardly stand outside your house waiting for you. <laughs> uh, and Citra uses the in-game timer. Or not in-game. It's in-game timer is based on your computer's timer, so it's nighttime. So they just look like total creeps standing outside my house in the middle of the night. Oh, Matang and Oshawott. Interesting. Oh, there's Swaddle. And Bellsprout. Okay, surprise- Oh my god! Surprisingly good outbreaks without even a reset, chat. What is this? The shiny gods have rewarded me on this day. Oh, and then Oink alone is there. Alright, well, we're going over here. I hope this is a good outbreak. Yeah, I'm working my way towards 800 shinies, chat. That's crazy. So I'm going to be playing X version, and Tyler's going to take Y. And we're going to play through... Almost all the Pokemon I've planned for my team are early game, which isn't a problem. I'm just gonna have a stacked team early because the XP share will hold my hand the whole way. <laughs> so it's, it's not like it really matters, but just a just a funny observation. All right, we'll do Tink first if this outbreak is not atrocious. Yeah, I did, we, we did some testing, so hopefully the games will run fine. Hmm. <laughs> well... I guess at least Tinka Tink is the only thing spawning here. Still not great. 
And it's only giving me like three. Oh, they're spawning in the wall. Are you joking? I, I just killed two of them that were in the wall. Yeah, they're they're actively spawning in the wall. That's great. That's that's okay. All right. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's it going? What? Welcome to the Tinka Tink Wall Shiny Hunting Experience. Gonna be great. I like Tinka Tink's like weird tooth mouth. <laughs> this line is so good. They really knocked it out of the park. How many herba do I have left? Why, you're already thinking I'm gonna need a sandwich for this? I don't have a single member of the Tinkaton line shiny. I do not love its shinies, but, you know, what can be done? What, what can you really do? I don't have Sandy Gash Shiny. I'm looking at my list here. I also thought I had Pisimian. Hmm. I'm missing a good chunk of Gen 7 Shinies. Mushimush is trying to get ones that are spawning in the wall. <laughs> this is so sad. I can't even really, like, clip in here to, to look. I can never remember which... which button is which on the D-pad. Well, let's just hope the shiny doesn't spawn in the wall, chat, because if it does, I'll never know. If it does, I, I will literally never know. What's up, everybody? Hold ZL, I should be able to turn and look in the wall. No, 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 what are we doing? Go. Oh, there's, there's one. <laughs> Actually, are there two? Yeah, there's two in there. There's two in here. Yeah, that trick works. Yeah, Mushy Mush can't get him though. That's awesome, dude. This is such a well-made game. <laughs> oh, do you ever just stop and think how many how many shinies do you think you haven't noticed in this game? Either stuck in the walls or you just walked right past, or... Hey, can you- can you leave, Aspathra? 
This picnic reset. Get rid of all these randoms. Does Pyro really need to spawn all over the map? Probably passed by a hundred shinies. I've only had two fails that I know of in this game, which were Cyclazar, who Welcome back. Who despawned Lost Shaft for the 54 months! 54 months. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not gonna fit all the boopers. 20, 30, 40, 50, no. <laughs> Booper limit. Booper maximum limit. I'd probably be able to fit more if, if Twitch didn't give me one of the worst affiliate emote codes of all time. But, you know. Thanks for the 54 months. Every time I come back to Paldea, it's just the same shit mons that spawn everywhere. Pyroar is everywhere. Mudbray feels like it's everywhere. Even Axew feels so deeply not rare. And Satoddle is over here for some reason. I'm so scared the shiny's gonna be in the wall, chat. <laughs> I'm terrified. Are there any in here? Ooh, it's not letting me. No, there's nothing there. It'll be nice to finally get Tinkaton's family done, because I don't have a single one right now, Chad. I need Tinkaton and I need a uh, small of. If I- if I can get those two families done, I pretty much have almost all my Gen 9 shinies that I can get, you know, not counting Wo Chien, Koridon, Muridon, blah blah blah, the ones that are locked, which there are many. <laughs> the locked list is really starting to pile up, chat. I was looking at my tracker the other day and it's like, wow, there's just like entire sections that I- like, who knows when I'll be able to ever mark these off. All the new paradoxes from the DLC. It's a big list. You love Smoliv and its family? I do too. They have really good shinies, too. I've just never had any luck. I've never had any luck shiny hunting it. I've shiny hunted it before. But it just never wanted to show up, you know? What's up, everybody? We're shiny hunting Tinka Tink right now. And then after this, I have Oshawott, who I need many. <laughs> I need many Oshawott. Okay, we're not- we're not quite there yet. 
Plant Pokemon are the best. I agree. Dollop kind of scared me. When I saw what Small have evolved into, I thought it was going to be another, like, Serena or Florges. <gasps> it's Snom. More tree Pokemon. I'm surprised there's so few, like, deer Pokemon. Oh, and of course Lowkix is here. This godforsaken Pokemon spawns all over this entire map. And is aggressive and is annoying. <laughs> Yeah, there's very few. There's very, very few deer Pokemon. Like, we have five million turtles and birds and monkeys and primates and blah blah blah. Yeah, Stantler and Wordier. Wordier, everybody's favorite Pokemon, Wordier. Speaking of wordier chat, Masters put out a trailer tonight. They're adding Volo. <laughs> They're adding Volo and Jacques? Okay. Definitely not a... a pair that I would have thought about, personally. I saw a hammer. I thought I saw some spawning in here. And I was correct. This is such garbage. This is actual garbage trash. Gotta go check the wall. Make sure no shinies spawn inside the wall. Yeah, they added Volo, and he comes with to <laughs> he comes with Togepi, which is funny. Also, the the little I watched the little video, and they have Cynthia and Garchomp, and Garchomp is looking back at him like, bruh. <laughs> Gar Garchomp is is uh is like this guy is sus. Cracked me up. Looking back at him like, huh? Under the ground in this game? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mushy's attacking the ones in the wall. Oh, there's a bunch of them in there. I see there's a bunch of them. <laughs> look, 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 look. Oh, man. I had it. Yeah, I, I, did you see all the wonderful geometry? Oh, yeah, there it is. Beautiful. There- look at how far away that one is! What if that one was shiny? Like, I would just be screwed. It would just actually be over for me. Oh my god! Look at how many are in there! <laughs> I was like, that's, we're not getting a lot of spawns because they're all in the goddamn wall. There was an Espathra and Okay, the Espathra's there. But the rest of the Tinka Tinks are all in the wall. <laughs> Insane. Every day I wake up. I was- I thought- I thought for sure, like, over here- Oh, Mushy's attacking a few. They'll be hiding shinies in the mountain. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. Yeah, there's three. Okay. All right. We got three. Oh, no, there's four. There's three right there. There's one. <laughs> yeah, use rock smash. You would need rock climb and rock smash together. Look at look at the way these ugly, disgusting mountains touch. <sighs> Every day I wake up. <laughs> All the shinies are in the walls. All the shinies are in the That sounds like something to <laughs> The shinies are in the walls. Like I guess I just got to I got to stay back. Otherwise they will in fact just be in the wall. Oh, but we can't forget Flittle has to spawn. Gotta get Flittle up in here. All in all, it's just all the shinies are in the wall. <laughs> and Snom is here. <laughs> also, Snom is here, featuring Snom. Hit recording artist Snom. They're all aggressive too, so I can't even like. There, yeah, there. Oh, there's one. All right, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. Oh, there's a few. Did you see him? There was a few in there. There's one. There's another one. Okay, this, oh, that's, that was a good... Alright, none of those are shiny. That one had a mark. Oh, we gotta look over here. Oh god, I thought I just morphed into the wall for a second. Ugh, my eyes. Hey, hey wait, okay, not fair. I'm I'm rubbing my watery eyes. Can you give me a second here, Tinka Tuff? <laughs> can you can you give me like one second? I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> I should just be grateful. Chat, I have something. I, you know, the, uh, the infamous, uh, heartbreaking, the worst person you know just made a great point. I had that happen to me yesterday. So, uh, <laughs> this, this made me crack up. He's right! I mean, he's absolutely correct. People are talking about... I think somebody mentioned this in chat the other day, how Riddler was like, yeah, the game's barely just started development. And so Joe said, wait, people are really pushing a narrative that ZA has barely started development. Good lord, why must we continue with this absolute nonsense? <laughs> and uh, he went on to say... Yeah, let me just let me just get Mario 64 up in here. That'll get me in there. BLJ's the secret technique. He said there's a distinct l lack of understanding of game development in this space. It's not just random people, but I see it all the time from those who should actually have knowledge, yet it spreads. It's maddening. And then he said like in an interview with Game Informer, Masuda once said that there was no way TPC or Nintendo could force anything on Game Freak. Masuda- I didn't even know Masuda said this. I have been asking, where's the receipts for the TPCI evil corporation narrative people have been pushing forever? 
almost like it was bullshit. And I knew it was bullshit. The evil TPCI, you guys. That's the reason why these games are half-baked, half-finished products. Oh. Turns out... No, actually. What's up, Galaxy? Like, I knew this! I can't believe Joe, of all people, is validating me. I've never felt more validated in my life by Mr. Joe Serebi. That's crazy. <laughs> like, that is crazy. It's like, yeah, if you think about it for five seconds, it's fucking bullshit. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> what is the incentive to rush the games then? Money! The incentive is money! It's clear as day! Money! Like, every time somebody in chat has brought up, like, how it's TPCI's fault, it's like, well, what's- where did you learn this? What's the receipt? And then I never get an answer, because it's fucking bullshit. People just lie and say shit. On this day, I've been validated. Yeah, greed, money. <laughs> like, holy shit, thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> I just needed to talk about that, because it's like... Finally, somebody, somebody said something that makes sense around here. I, I don't know where that narrative started. And also, he's right about the, the distinct lack of understanding of game development. And I've seen people say, like, oh, Ku is just trolling. Is he? Also, I... <laughs> I saw one of the big Poketubers made a video responding to what Ku said. And it turns out the guy has made, like, 30 videos on PLZA. Imagine making 30 videos about a game we know next to nothing about. Pokemon content well is hella dry right now. <laughs> How can you make 30 videos about PLZA? How is there that much to talk about? Poketubers are truly something else. Their own breed. But, like, yeah, there's definitely a distinct lack of understanding of game development, and it's not just Pokemon fans. Yeah, it's like, does, does the world really need 30 videos about PLZA? You cannot have that much to say about it. I don't know, and it's it's just kind of interesting. I was reading all the different responses. Some people were defending the guy, and others were like, content mill, garbage, slop content. I hate that, like, Riddler Koo is just trolling, though. He's, he's just trolling.
me when I spread misinformation online. Like, I guess people do believe him. Be they'll believe anything he says. Even if it makes no logical sense. And he has been proven to be wrong multiple times. Oh yeah, he's definitely- it's, it's, it's- the whole thing is so fu- is so goofy, like, getting clout from spreading leaks over a children's game on the internet. And like, all the- all the beef with Centro is just weird and cringe. Coughing baby versus coughing baby. I, like, games take time to make, dude. You can't make AAA video games overnight. <laughs> games are getting longer and longer times for development, bigger budgets. They take years. Anyone that thinks they didn't immediately start working on PLZA the second Legends Arceus got shipped out the door, it's like, wh what are you doing? Indies cost 500 million. Dog shit games are considered triple A. Let me read- let me read the responses. Did anybody have? They don't know how development works. I don't know why he would even- why Riddler would even say that. Yeah, I mean, some of the most popular games have been, like, Game Jam games, which, which, if you're not familiar with a Game Jam, it's usually a game made in a very limited time window. Like, think about Baldi's Basics. That game was made in a very, very small window of time. And blew the frick up. Yeah, Flappy Bird. Yeah, stirring the pot for engagement. It's just, like, such a weird thing, like, I guess I'm more, why say that it's barely started development? Like, th that's not how video games are made. <laughs> I don't know. But it's like Joe said, most people don't have a singular clue about game development and just run with it. I mean, think of all the criticisms of Scarlet and Violet from people that were like, It's just the lazy developers. The devs are just lazy. Losing support for his leaks. Yeah, people are taking the piss out of that guy in the the thread of, that I was reading that Joe said. As they should. Diamond dust? I'll be honest, why is that in the game? I have never understood 
Like, of all the weird little details. And he's- okay, you can- leave me alone. I'm trying to see if you have a shiny brother in the walls. Nope. Look at this, chat. This is so ridiculous. This is insanely ridiculous. I gotta go check the wall. Just to make sure. If it was polished, it could be one of the best games in the franchise. If this game had more time in the oven, I could see that. It's got good bones. It would, it needs a lot of work though, not just performance wise. <laughs> but yeah, I mean if they took a longer if they took longer time to have more stuff to actually do in the game, you know, have where things don't spawn in the walls maybe. Sword and shield have much worse, but- Oh, I agree, yeah. I agree. I think Scarlet and Violet are- is a better Pokemon experience than Sword and Shield. Galar is rancid. <laughs> Galar is like, ear. Do I think it's the right step? I mean, we'll have to see. That's the, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, we have next to nothing in, in terms of information about the game. How it's going to look. How it's going to play. Anything. It's all just speculation at this point. So it's it's hard to say yet. I don't know, and like that one guy that made like 30 videos about PLZA and is responding to the bullshit coup said, you're just val- you're just giving him attention making videos about that. Oh boy, yay, snow. Oh, you, you okay over there, go go? Yeah, PLA has some real rough, rough things about it that I wasn't a fan of, that I would love to see improved. Like, no more of that weird battle system, please. <laughs> but, like, we don't- we don't know. We don't know. They haven't shown us next to anything. We have one CGI trailer. And that's it. They both get money and attention? Yes. That is very true. That's not shiny. I upset the game so it's punishing me with snow real. Yeah, definitely, like, these games take many years to work on, and they would not announce a release date for next year if they were just barely starting it. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's games take so much labor to make.
there's so many working parts of games too. Like you have to have sound effects, you have or sound design, you have to have music, you have to have character models, you have to have marketing and stuff like I was gonna say voice acting, not the case in Pokemon, but you you know what I mean. <laughs> For pretty much every other game. In, and with Pokemon, you have to have translating. You, you have to have tons of translating. Oh god, leave me- I'm trying to see if there's a shiny in the wall. Leave me alone. Dog and pony show. They saw that it sold well. I don't think they ever need to wait to see if a Pokemon game sells well. I don't think they can afford to. These games are cranked out way faster than most other AAA games are, so... I think they get the ball rolling the second the, f the last title gets out the door. If not sooner. I don't know, it's like all the people that were like, Pal World's gonna teach them. Pal World just came out, dog. <laughs> it just came out. They have. N there is not enough time for there to be any sort of response yet. That is just not logical. You're not living in reality. AA then triple A. Ugh, it's like my frustrations with Sonic. Sega gives gives Sonic games a budget of like five dollars and a ham sandwich. I saw a tweet yesterday that it was like, no offense, but why does Sonic- why does Sonic Frontiers look like Unreal Engine with a bunch of, like, shit plopped in it? And it's like, because it is. And then there were a bunch of retweets with people with, like, silver icons that were like, the normies are making opinions about Sonic. Am I out of touch? No, it is the children. No, it is the children who are wrong. The best Sonic opening cinematic is from Unleashed, and I will not hear any questions. That is the most cinematic, gorgeous cutscene in Sonic Unleashed. Only the rest of the game was like that. <laughs> If only the rest of the game was that polished and amazing. I mean, so it's something- it's funny because Sonic has had all these rumors that like Sonic Heroes is gonna get remade. And then it turns out like people are just making shit up. Different day, same shit. I'm a big Sonic fan, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Deep sigh. Yes. Okay, that one's not shiny. I mean, if they're shiny in the wall, like, what can I even do about that? I'm just, like, screwed. I'd have to try to, like, lure it over and throw a ball at it. And then hope I don't get stuck in the wall along with it. The heroes thing is false. I believe that was thoroughly debunked. Plays through Sonic Sonic 06. I never have played Sonic 06. 
That was my first biggest betrayal, chat. Because I only had Nintendo when I was that age. And Sonic 06 did not come out on the GameCube or the Wii. And I didn't have a 360 or a PlayStation 3, so... I didn't play Sonic 06. I remember watching videos of people playing that opening, like, demo level and seeing ads for it in, like, gaming magazines and being bitterly, bitterly upset that it was not coming out on a Nintendo console. <laughs> I was seething. Child me was seething. Ugh, I really would- I would love to hack my Switch just to hack this game so I could permanently turn weather off. Oh, thank you. The game heard me. I don't know, Sega's too busy, like... Making Sonic team up with Flappy Bird and releasing a thousand mobile games now. God forbid they actually re-release an old game that people would like to see. Oh, which... Okay, no- no copper hammers yet. Yeah, we're coming up on year two, right? I have, like, no concept of Pokemon, of time between po when Pokemon games come out. They all blend together to me. <laughs> and the weather started right back up. God damn it. Alright, okay, I'm s no. <laughs> Iframes? What are those? I I'm trapped. Cool. I can't believe I'm actively shiny hunting inside of a wall right now. What is going on? What is actually going on? Somebody responded- also Volo is trending for me. <laughs> Volo is tr if you haven't watched the mass here, I'll link it. It's it's funny. Garchomp's sus look is so funny. Cynthia, what a S Cynthia. He sounds exactly like I thought he would. By the way, whoever voice casted for that did it a great job. He sounds perfect. Look at Garchomp's face. Oh, that's so funny. He sounds perfect.
Yeah, who's the voice actor? Do we do we know who the voice actor is? Why did they decide to bundle him with Jacques? <laughs> My two favorite crazy guys. My two favorite wacky dudes. I kind of appreciate that Masters always does like giveaways. I've even entered a few. They have a uh, like you can win plushies and stuff, which is really cool. I don't know, I don't like play Masters, but I tolerate its existence. <laughs> I think... I don't know, I kind of like hearing the voice actors and stuff for the game. It's kind of cool. They're both secret villains. They know something about Jacques that we don't. Oh my god, please. I'm gonna clip through the mountain. Master sex people. <laughs> oh man. That was a that was a great time on the internet right there. Pokemon Master Six. <laughs> good, good job, guys. Good job on the marketing for that one. Good job. No notes. I stand by that I think voice acting will happen in Pokemon at some point. It's almost like they're dancing around it. Like, they were dancing around it in the Scarlet and Violet, like, Iono trailer. Where she had a, uh... People thought that that was actually gonna be voice acting in the game because of that. There was one with Gimme Ghoul and Professor Willow and Jacques, too. Snackwell. We can't go one gen without a v extremely goofy named character anymore, can we? What's up, Odd Eyes? A Spanish comedian? Huh. Interesting. They had- Scarlet and Violet had multiple trailers with voice acting. <laughs> and then it's nowhere to be found in the actual game. Crazy. Oh, leave me alone. I'm just looking in the walls for any shinies. Give me some space. Yeah, mustard. I was thinking, uh, sword, sword, bird, shield, word, squid, word. Honey. His wife's name is Honey. Get it? Honey mustard. <laughs> Sonic did that joke like two decades ago. With cream and cheese. Anime dubs. I mean, the guy, he sounds good. The guy that voices Volo sounds just like how I imagine Volo would sound. Sweet and sour. That kind of goes hard, though. Also, sweet and sour is, like, the best sauce, so I would be forced to stand. Is 
Yeah, I mean, people like Veronica Taylor are still doing voice acting. Mustard. <laughs> what was his name in Japanese that they were like, you know what, we're gonna call him Mustard. I'm gonna look this up, I'm curious. Oh, no, uh, just kidding, his name is Mustard in Japanese. <laughs> it's their fault. His name is literally Mustard in Japanese. <laughs> I gave them too much credit, apparently. Honey's name in Japanese is Mitsuba. And then their son's name is Hyde. Hyde is Hyde in Japanese as well. God, I forgot how goofy their son looks. Yeah, Mustard was voiced by ProZD. I knew that. Mitsuba is a parsley-like herb. Ah. I should have called her, like, oregano. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's parsley. This is my wife, cilantro. <laughs> Hyde even has like headphones in. Like how nerdy all the kids in Sword and Shield look. He's got like a pink Cub Fu sweater, khaki shorts, and long, long socks and brown shoes. The Apricorn Ball gotcha game. It's funny you say that, Tyler. In my downtime yesterday when I was doing a few raids, I got a few more, uh, Apricorn balls. I didn't have any friend balls. I got a few moon. I didn't have any safari balls. Also, doing raids in this game reminds me how much I dislike raiding with people that have no idea what they're doing. I joined one raid and the guy didn't ready up and the whole thing crashed. So that's always awesome. It was like a one star too. It was like, I think it might have been like pick a peck or something. So this dipshit is probably going through his box like, hmm. What's the right Pokemon to bring to a one-star raid? And then didn't join up in time and it timed out. So that's awesome. And then the second time, it was a Mandy Buzz. And I brought Zashi and I probably I, pro I could have brought a better Pokemon myself. Zashi is usually a safe bet though. It was fire, which was not helpful. I should have just brought Kyogre or something like that. But then the other two bring an Iron Hands, which was not trained. It was going for like self-harming moves and it, it, I could I could just tell it was not. It was just some random ass Iron Hands. It was probably the one from the raids they're doing right now. And then the other guy brought a Blastoise and was missing Hydro Pumps. It's like, <laughs> it's such a waste of time. Needless to say, we didn't- we didn't win. There- there was no wins to be had. 
And then the host had a Corviknight, which got taunted, so Corviknight couldn't even do its job of screeching. Probably trying to find his shi shiny Zacian in his box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I did a raid where somebody brought Ash Hat Pikachu, and it's like, even in these, like... There's a snob in the wall over there. Even in these privately hosted, like, shiny raids, people are trying to flex. It's like, whoa, cool Ash Hat Pikachu. <laughs> wow, you're so cool. The shot, the Ash Hat Pikachu. We have a gamer over here, certifiable gamer. I might do a sandwich for this chat. I need two. I need Tinkaton as well. This might be a sandwich situation right now. Oh God, the loud ass car people. Yeah, vroom vroom, dude. Anyway. <laughs> oh! Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, that was, uh, I was literally just about to do a sandwich. Okay. Alright, just hold up! Just hold up! Just give me a second! Just let- <laughs> This tink- this- this- this tink is like, Erm, actually, if you save before shiny, then it's not valid. <laughs> this- this Tinkaton- this- this, uh, Tinkatink is like, uh, or Tinkatuff. Why do I always say Tinkatink? It was like, Erm, actually, if you save before a shiny, it's- it's one of those shiny elitists. I only shiny hunt full odds only. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. What do I want to use? I kind of want to do Lux. I, Lux is just my favorite ball chat. I, I can't resist. Love would probably work good. Love or heal would work, but I'm gonna go Lux. Attack groups of Ponyard and Bisharp. Man, this Pokemon is great. Tinkatuff, the whole line is great. Maybe if if she had a mark, I would have used the the love ball. Oh golly, where am I? I really don't have a lot of space left, chat. <laughs> I really don't have a lot of space left. Also, I did a mini or raid. It's pink. All right, well, I need one more for Tinkaton. At least it didn't spawn in the wall, chat. At least it didn't spawn in the wall. <laughs> Hated the pol- The Polar Express is a classic! I love that movie. It's got weirdly, like, liminal vibes. When they're exploring, like, the Santa workshop at the end, 
and it's just like cavernous, huge, and nobody's there. It's kind of a vibe. The main character in Polar Express is also voiced by Josh Hutcherson. Fun fact. All right, none of them were in, none of them in the wall are shiny. We're good. <laughs> it's funny. I was watching. I'm I'm mid watching it. I'm not even done yet. I am twenty minutes in. <laughs> I, I don't know what this says about me. Of, of an hour video, why Mega Mind Two is a cinematic disaster. Apparently, it, so it's a pilot for a TV show, because DreamWorks loves making low-effort TV shows. Although the, the How to Train Your Dragon show was kind of good, the first one, not the new one. But anyway, there's like a little girl, and she's like an influencer. <laughs> I think that might be my least favorite thing. That is that is in media now is when there's an obnoxious streamer influencer character. That is my least favorite trope, my character, whatever you want to call it. It is so obnoxious. And then half the time, like this this little girl was following like Mega Mine and got like half a million followers in two days. Um, not realistic. <laughs> it's like they write these influencer characters that have absolutely no fucking clue anything else. It's just like, what if I take selfies and, and do vlogs? That's all it is, right? Rancid. Absolutely rancid. Fastest way for me to hate something is if there's an influencer character in it. And it's like, this is a little girl, too. It's like, time out, dog. <laughs> yeah, terrible vibes. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, take a wild guess who my least favorite gym leader in this game was. <laughs> it just feels so dated. Like, I'm pretty sure Iono or Iono says, like, smash the like button, and it's like... Wow, that joke was so funny back in 2011. Hilarious, guys. It's- it's so, like, how do you do, fellow kids? It- it's just like a bunch of boomers writing... Like, young characters having no idea. <laughs> God, I weep for the day there's gonna be, like, a, a VTuber character in a Pokemon game. VTuber gym leader in Gen 10. It's so over. Also, the Megamind TV show takes place, like, two days after the movie. <laughs> Why would you make that decision? Why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, Iono already has all of the the trap, the trap, the the the, <laughs> uh, the annoying characteristics of some of those big Japanese VTubers. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the, the, hey, I love that theory where it's like, Iono is like a Rotom. Because there's a few comments from people in the city that she like doesn't age. 
Which is, why would they put that in the game? <laughs> it's either a commentary on, like, plastic surgery or something... Something sinister is, a, is afoot. Uh-huh. You can't get through the wall, idiot. Look at this low kicks. Oh no. She's our Gen 9 ghost girl. It was there in front of us the whole time. And I love that her gym leader minigame is like, where's Waldo? It has nothing to do with streaming or anything. They, they couldn't even like, f they just half-ass it. <laughs> they, they were, they're, n they're not committed enough to the bit. So they were like, well, what do we do for the, the streamer, YouTuber? Uh, where's Waldo, huh? You gotta find the professor. How does she, what does she even have to do with the professor? What is this? What is this mini game? <laughs> or, uh, director, not professor. Clavel. Clavel. I feel like he has, pro Clavel has professor vibes. Director. Is that what they call, like, the leads of- I thought, like, they're principals. Yeah, Mr. Beast challenge. They could have done something funny like that. If they actually had something to say about it, then I would retract my statement. If she was, like, a sick and twisted, like, Squid Games, Mr. Beast type, then it would actually have been pretty funny. Mr. Beast! Yeah, head headmaster just makes me think of like Hogwarts. Headmaster. Here it's like principal. We I had a pr I had principals in school. Just let us face the damn gym. <laughs> I don't know, like, the small of, uh, bounce was kind of fun. Grushes was okay. Although, if you think about it for longer than, like, two seconds, it kind of falls apart. Because what other kids are going to have access to Coridon and Miridon? Are, are you just supposed to, like, learn how to ski? Or snowboard? How do you do Grush's challenge if you're not main protagonist? The Psychic Gym was dumb. That one... I, again, they went with, like, a big beauty makeup lady. And her challenge didn't have, like, her challenge was just weird. Hello! Simon says. We are, are we just creatively bankrupt on puzzles in Pokemon now? Some of them I don't even remember. The ghost gym was funny because of Grievard. Yeah, like little rhythm games and stuff are fine. As long as they're fun. I don't know, the Iono's Gym Leader Challenge felt like a, a literal preschool baby game. 
And like, yeah, yeah, I know this game is for children. <laughs> but they also want older audiences to enjoy the games, too. I don't know, what are some of the better gym leader challenges? I always kind of like Chuck's gym, where you have to do a few strength puzzles and then Chuck throws a boulder. <laughs> and then they added like the waterfall in Heart Gold Soul Silver. I feel like every gen has one, like, really weird, not good gym, pre-gym thing. Without fail. Like, I, I'll stand by, I hate Lieutenant Surge's gym. <laughs> Having to sift through RNG garbage is not... good. Or fun. I don't know, most gyms are like, go here, press a switch. Jasmine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jasmine's no-nonsense approach, that's what makes her such a great gym leader. I feel like the Ampharos stuff is tied into her, though. Like, your reward for all the Ampharos stuff is no-nonsense, you can just go fight Jasmine. Look at the way these two rock textures go together. Good lord. Favorite gym in the entire series? That's a really hard question. That is a very tough question. Stand on thing and see where it takes you, this is true. I love- I do like the Team Rocket puzzles, though. I always thought those were fun. Do 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 do. Mm. Oh, you mean his gym about the Team Rocket puzzles? I don't know. I don't mind them. I I feel like they're they're slightly challenging, and if you mess up, you gotta go fight a trainer. The most punishing gym is probably Wallace. If you goof the final ice puzzle for Wallace, you're essentially sent to Fangirl Shadow Realm. I don't know, I'm looking forward to playing more X and Y so I can remember... <laughs> so I can remember, uh... more of the gyms. I mean, I remember- I remember, like, Ramos' gym, I remember Wolfric's, I remember Olympia's, I remember Viola. <laughs> I, I I remember her name because Chad told me the other day. Grant's gym is like rock climbing, right? I'm gonna use some real weird Pokemon on my team, Chad. I'm gonna try to go for Pokemon I have not really used before, so you're gonna see me use some unhinged picks. Oh yeah, Kar oh, Kar I, I'm gonna- I hate Karina, dude. <laughs> she might be my least favorite gym leader of all time. Tyler and I were talking and he's like, yeah, the f I, I might get this one for the fighting gym and I'm like, the fighting gym? He's like, yeah, Karina, and I'm like, 
Oh, yeah. That random little blonde skater girl who has absolutely no fighting type aesthetic, style, substance, nothing. She doesn't even have colors that match Lucario. She's just like a random NPC they made and were like, yeah, you can be the gym leader. She has no style. She has no grace. Her Mega Lucario is a true disgrace. Oh, so we were researching how to do fur frow haircuts. I forgot there was like a style system in X and Y. Did anybody ever bother getting their style points really high in X and Y? Because that's how you get fur frow haircuts. The more style points you have, the more access to fur frow haircuts you get. Yeah, Tyler's gonna be playing with me. I'm playing through X and he's gonna play through Y. You don't have any style points, Justin. <laughs> you won't be able to get your fur frow the the cool kabuki haircut though. What a what a what a shame. Is that a shiny? Yeah, it is. Alright. Woohoo! I turned into Winnie the Pooh for that one. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tinka Tough. Alright, that wasn't too bad, chat. Now I'll just need the baby, and I'll have this entire family done. Oof. Thank goodness. <laughs> that was my Winnie the Pooh noise of relief, so I don't ever have to shiny hunt the ones in the wall again. I'm free! Wahoo! What's up, Artemis? Yeah, most of the Pokemon I planned on my team are early game, chat. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a, a slight spoiler. They are all early game. All right, marked off two more. Well, I got to evolve Tinkaton. So that's 728. Tinkaton. I don't remember what level you evolve. 38. Okay. If this was Gen 5, Tinkaton would have would evolve at like 57. <laughs> Viv, that's a good guess. I have never used that line before. Gen 6 is super easy, so don't worry about difficulty or anything. There's actually a few. I, when I was testing to make sure Citra would, one, would run correctly, one. I talk good. There's actually a few early game Pokemon I would use if I had more space. I would like to use Weedle. But I don't have any room. I also try to go for like a good variety of types, but I do have a little bit of overlap. <laughs> I have a tiny little bit of overlap. Which one do I want to evolve, actually? Okay, I don't think it matters. I'll just evolve the one I got the latest. Well, let's see Tinka, Tinka Tough run around. You run around, I run around. We're all gonna run, run, run around. 
Pokemon line is so good. You should have been a pseudo. Look, it's even got little pads. Ugh. Tinkaton deserved to be a pseudo. This should have been the gen we had two pseudos since three, chat. They goofed it. They absolutely goofed it. And then they made Tinkaton kind of terrible, stat-wise. If Tinkaton was working with pseudo stats... <laughs> they were cowards. God, she's like a caveman Muppet. Giving Flintstones vibes. What a great Pokemon. Caracosta Lilip Armaldo. The fossils. Tyler's gonna use a fossil. I am not. Spoilers. Oh, I know, Galaxy. I had to talk to them because I wanted to get to testing battles. I said this earlier, but it, it's really funny what, having Serena, because I just picked Callum just to test, having Serena and Shauna just awkwardly stand outside my house in the in the dark of night. It's like, oh, you two are weird. <laughs> Yay! Oh, let me take Tinkaton out. Never mind. Getting ahead of myself. What's up, Blue Pepper Man? Favorite fossil? Tink Tinkaton. <laughs> yes, my favorite fossil. Tyrantrum and Aerodactyl for me. Oh, such a cute Pokemon. Even if the hammer, <laughs> that hammer texture is a lot. Tinkaton is like the anti-enamorous. They made a girly, oh, what just happened? I just like, a... oh. Okay. <laughs> they made a fun, girly Pokemon, but it's actually, like, cool as hell, because it has a big weapon. Alright, get out of there, Gordon. You're not a shiny. Silly Gordon. Yeah, when I remember, wasn't that, uh... Wasn't that, uh, Tinkaton's, like, name when it first leaked? Amy Rose? The Amy Rose Pokemon? The Hammer Pokemon? Malachi with the 299 on the YouTubes. Thank you, thank you. Find a Litten. I need to, actually. I'm still missing quite a few starters, chat, unfortunately. Alright, well we got Tink almost done. What else we got to work with today? Venonat. <laughs> I don't think I need any more shiny Venonat, chat. Could do Oshawott. All right, don't need a Ranguru. We got some good outbreaks without having to restart. Or reset them, I should say. Oink. Oink, oink and pig and fish. All right, let's check out the... Uh... Let's check out Oshawa chat. Did I heal? I think I healed. We'll heal again. 
don't have any shinies in your game. Why is that? Uh, why? You tell me. <laughs> you have the shiny charm? That would greatly help. I can't believe that I complained that this place is overly obnoxious bright and somebody said, Why don't you go touch grass? Huh? No, you, actually. Alright, we've shiny hunted Oshawa before to no success, so... We'll see how it, we'll see how this goes, chat. We'll see how this goes. Oh, are they actually on land? If they're on land instead of the ocean, that would be a great improvement. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, how are you gonna sit here and defend it like, it's not too bright actually, you just need to go outside. Anyway. Yeah, it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Uh-oh. Not a lot of Ashes are spawned in chat. This might be a bad outbreak, actually. I don't know, is there some sort of, like, secret... Uprising over people that like dark mode. Sorry, I don't like being blinded on my big widescreen monitor. <laughs> by by blinding white awful looking things in a video game. I mean shit, maybe you're right. Maybe I do need to go outside, but still, it's bright out there too. <laughs> I, I stand by that it just looks terrible. But anyway. Oh, Chad, this is a bad outbreak. I'm only getting, like, one or two Ashes spawning. Uh-oh. And a water sandwich won't work here because it's gonna spawn the same stuff. Uh-oh. And I'm lagging a little bit. Oh, that's so annoying. It's always frustrating. Sometimes you get really good outbreaks, and sometimes you get ones that are not good. I still haven't gotten uh, Cyndaquil. I know a lot of you said Cyndaquil's outbreak was really bad. I don't know, it's so frustrating. It's like, look at everything else that's spawning. It should be Oshawa, not Smeargle, not Minchino, not Seal. Yeah, why is Smeargle here? That's a great question. <laughs> what business does Smeargle, a beagle painter, have doing in this cold-ass place? My friend, why are you here? Wouldn't its paints freeze? No, Oshawa, come back. Where is Mushy Mush? What are you doing? Where are you going? <laughs> Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Mushy Eye Joe? Honestly, I don't think Minchino really feels like it fits over here, too. Like, it's like supposed to be what a 
fluffy little mammal. But I also feel like it's a Pokemon that... It would be like Meowth spawning over here. It's like a luxury Pokemon. I can't believe people don't like Oshawa. It's such a cute Pokemon. Like, say whatever about Samurott or Duwa or Hisui Sam, but Oshawa itself is so cute. What's a Pokemon that you guys think are, is overhated? What's a Pokemon where you, you see maybe more vitriol and hatred than you think it deserves, Charizard? <laughs> Won't somebody think of the precious Chazard? Chestnut, Drudgegon? I'll agree with you on Drudgegon. I don't know if I can agree with Chestnut. <laughs> Drudgegon does get a weird amount of hate. All the ones I'm thinking of are starters. Oshawa, I see, take too many strays. Chikorita's entire line. People were really mean about Poplio when Gen 7 first came out for some reason. Bruxish? I actually agree with that. I think Bruxish is a perfectly neat little Pokemon. Klefki? Yes. True. Charizard is cool and you're tired of pretending it's not. I think for most people, like, we recognize Charizard is cool. It's just overused. I mean, I like Charizard a lot. I literally- <laughs> I literally just have the, uh... Target released a Garchomp and Charizard double figure pack. So I inadvertently bought another- I- I have a Charizard figure collection. I have a few plushies, I have a ton of figures, I have my own Charizard collection. I could put them all on a shelf and be like, look at this. Also, chat. I, uh... What brand is that? They're exclusive to Target. It's just, uh... Hold on. It's the trainer team. They're huge, too. I was thinking about doing, like, a short opening them. I don't know. It's just the, uh, the Jazzwares. Jazzwares figures. They were on sale. I got them on sale, so that was nice. Target had like a sale. But it's a nice Charizard figure. Speaking of figures, chat, I have a. I want. I, I want. I want. Uh... <laughs> what? What are? What are your opinions? on this. So the Pokemon Center announced two expensive figures today. I knew these were coming. Um, they're that like glossy plastic that the Pokemon Center US is obsessed with using. Here, I'll just link them. Yeah, Justin, that's it. I got it on sale for like 20 bucks or something like that. They're not- they're nice! They're- they're- they're good looking. I like that Charizard comes with a little base. But there's Cynthia. And- Leon looks worse. Leon... like... they kind of whitewashed him? I don't- I don't know what's going on with Leon. Look at Leon's face. He kind of looks like... He, he's gonna shit his pants. <laughs> but like, 
It's a Garchomp figure. I collect Garchomp, but I don't love Cynthia. And I've been lucky enough where, like, the Kotobukiya figure, the Scale World figure, I can separate and sell Cynthia, which I have done. I will I will sell off Cynthia. I don't care. I, she's not one of my favorite trainers. I've also seen some really weird takes about her on Twitter lately. But anyway. Can I- I, I have to wonder, can I remove her? Because I don't want her in my collection. She does not belong there. But like, it's a Garchomp figure. Leon's ace, Dragapult. I feel like Dragapult is fine. It actually looks pretty cool the way it's curled around Leon. It's Leon's face that doesn't look quite right. But now it's like, well shit, do I have to buy this? <laughs> Am I, is, this in my con is this in my contract for, for Garchomp stuff? What do I do? Do I, like, is- can Cynthia be separated? Garchomp itself looks good, even though he's kind of doing, like, a FNAF 2 Foxy jump scare. Garchomp itself looks okay. Cynthia looks kind of doughy, though. Also, they teased, uh, I think Grimsley, which was kind of crazy. Grimsley merch in the year 2024. <laughs> they teased Grimsley and Titar and Lance and Dragonite next. I really wish they were, like, a little bit cheaper. Yeah, they had some new light boxes. I don't know, it's it's all the normie Pokemon. Gengar, Pikachu, Mimikyu. I saw Gengar and I clapped. Oh, I'm probably too close to this guy. Okay, they let me do it. <laughs> they, they let me put a picnic up. That's kind of a weird, like... Also, the base for Cynthia almost looks like there's, like, powdered sugar on it. That's a weird kind of curse, though. Like, I love Garchomp. But Garchomp is associated with a champion. And therefore, I've had to put up with her merch just as much as Garchomp's merch. But like I said, it's usually been fine. I've usually been able to just sell... Cynthia figures. I don't know, it's like... Garchomp gets a pretty decent amount of merchandise. Yeah, I've bought... Two or three different Garchomp figures lately. So on one hand, it's nice that Garchomp gets merchandise, but on the other hand, sometimes it gets merchandise like the the Cynthia figure or that awful godforsaken premium Bandai one where it's like a thousand dollars and sold out and I'll probably never own it. That's shiny. Oshawott. You're beautiful. I appreciate you. You're a friend of the stream. I'm getting up notices. I'm getting the save button ready. You're shiny, and I haven't even gotten the outbreak down yet. Oh, yes! This is- see, I was- I said Oshawa was great, and this is why. How does anybody hate sweet Oshawa? Friend of the stream, Oshawa, my friend. 
I actually kind of really like this shiny. What's a good, uh, what's an appropriate Pokeball for this shiny, chat? Dive? No, don't wake up. Timer, I should time you out for saying that, Tyler. <laughs> Timer, get out of here. <laughs> I think you should use a Dusk Ball. I guess I'll do Dive, question mark? Alright. Well, there's- there's one Oshawott down, chat. You'll love to see it, another starter in the books. I only need three more, cause I need one for Hisui Sam. Shall shallop scallop. Oh look at that. That was a very lucky I've been having really good luck with the water starters chat. Piplup was really nice to me too. Even though from Piplup I definitely <laughs> I'll gas up Oshawa. I'm not gassing up Pip. Well actually I do like Piplup. Except for when it evolves. You don't think there's a single ugly first stage starter? I don't really think there is either. Baja Blast. When is Taco Bell coming out with the Baja Blast gelato everywhere? I need to know this information. The first stage or the final stage? That's a good question. This is why I wish we had more insight on the Pokemon design process. It's super interesting. Like, some Pokemon lines aren't even designed by the same people. Like, Flittle and Espathra were both designed by different people. Starters probably aren't like that. But still, it's- I'd still, like, love to know about, like, what animals do they pick? How do they decide on, like, Meowskarat as a magician, and a singer for Skeledurge, and a dancer for Quackoval? Do they decide- do they, do they decide on, like... I almost said profession, is like... <laughs> Meowskarat is employed. Like, what- what comes first in the design process? I'd- I'd love to know that. To actually experience it. Gotta- gotta get the Baja. You gotta get it. The- the ice- the icy, the slurpy, the freeze version is the best. Although half the times I ever go to Taco Bell, they don't have it. <laughs> We do have insight on Osh- Yeah, they used to do a lot more of that, and then right, right around, like, Gen 8, hmm, I wonder what happened. They really stopped doing stuff like that. Alright, so Oshawott's down. Duwat and Sam are next, and then gotta get the Asha for Hisui Sam. And my game is lagging because of the weather. That's my favorite.
Okay. That was quick. That went faster than I thought it would. Yeah, they definitely are. They 100% are. Yeah, that's one area Pokemon does a pretty good job with. Raihan. I guess Raihan was an influencer type character too. Maybe because he wasn't in it, you said so in your face and like. Be sure to smash that like button. <laughs> At least I don't remember. I gotta go back and play through 8 at some point, chat. I don't look forward to that day. I want to get to that point where you talk to Sonya, and there's that- where it looks like there's a path to the power plant. I swear to you, that's cut content. That's my biggest, uh... <laughs> Besides the- all the mythicals are locked so you pay for them in Pogo. That's my biggest ongoing Pokemon tinfoil hat theory. That was definitely a place you went to at some point in development and they cut it. Yeah, an Instagram influencer, that's- yeah. The funniest thing about Raihan is that that character was very popular and that inadvertently meant Duraludon got tons of figures. Which is super funny. Quite possibly one of the weirdest dragon Pokemon. <laughs> Has some of the nicest figures out of- out of anything. There's a Nendroid Geraldon, there's a uh, I think they made a Figma. Who would have thought? Not me. Oh yeah, Tyler, are you here? I forgot to tell you. Apparently they restocked the Appleton plush on the Pokemon Center, but they raised the price by like 50 bucks. It used to be like 70 or 80 and now it's like 120 or something like that. What's the weirdest Pokemon? Cryogonal? Duraludon? Archaludon? Or Archaladon, however you say it? Yeah, Stila. I feel like picking an Ultra Beast isn't fair, though. <laughs> They're purposely designed to be weird. Is it bigger? No, it's already life size! Appleton is- if you didn't know, chat, Appleton is the size of a small dog. It is not a big Pokemon. 
Also, it's sold out. They raised the price and it's sold out. They're such bastards. Yeah, it's 130 bucks now. It's 21 and 3 fourths inches. And it's sold out. Damn. That's crazy. I mean, Stack Attacka, Blacephalon, weird. Zerkatry, weird. Buzzwool, weird. Guzzlord is pretty weird. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I'm sure you guys are really strapped for cash right now. Like, <laughs> you, you guys are really, are really struggling right now. Definitely not just raising prices because they can. Um, actually, the prices of resources have gone up. Therefore, they're raising the prices is fair. Don't you... Think about the big corporation, please. That Apple 10 plush has been sold out for years, by the way. It went up very briefly on the Pokemon Center, sold out almost instantly, and they never restocked it for years. And then it comes back, and they they raise the price on it, like... <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. That's awesome. The yen has been in the gutter. That's kind of been nice buying over here. It's like I, I see something that's like 6,000 yen and it's like only gonna have to pay like 40, 30 some odd dollars for it. I've seen a lot of people, like, scalping the sitting cuties lately. Because they sell out on the Pokemon Center and then people are like, well, where am I ever gonna- where am I gonna get this? And so they buy them at a markup or buy bootlegs on Amazon. Want to sell most of your sitting cuties? Hey, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you look up if you do sell them that you're making your money back. <laughs> if you have one that's particularly rare, make sure you price it accordingly. Also, Tyler, I don't think you were here for for what I just said. <laughs> the Appleton Life Size Plush. I, did I already tell you about this? Maybe I dreamed it. I don't know. <laughs> the Appleton Life Size Plush came back in stock and they raised the price of it. I mean, the Sitting Cuties themselves, when they had a big restock a few months ago, they jacked up the price by like five bucks. So they went from being like eleven ninety nine, you know, what they were intended to be, small, cute little plushies, and now they're almost twenty dollars. Like what is going on? 
I, I feel like that's kind of defeating the point. <laughs> All the substitute plushies have been sold out forever. So you probably could get a decent penny for it. Will tourists and cor corporations thrive? Uh, relatable. I still remember the first promo that the Substitute Plush came out in. It was during Gen 5. It was Gen 5 era. And, uh, it was a promo all about in-game items. I still have a few clear files that I got from that. Oh, that was such a cool promo. To be fair, the Pokemon Center has had some pretty good promos lately. I really liked that Toxic. They just brought over the Claude Sire. Which, the fact that they just brought Claude Sire over and nothing else is such a bummer. There was a Gulpin like, ceramic holder, there's a Marini hairbrush, there's a bunch of really fun stuff from it. Also, the Claude Sire is 50 bucks. Oh, jeez. Shit is so expensive now. Yeah, they even have Claude Sire parentheses poison point, because that's what the promo was called in Japan. And that's the only thing they brought over. They didn't bring over the keychains, the stationery. The vile plume tissue holder, nothing else. The upcoming Quaxley promo is pretty cute. Also, I'm shocked they're paying attention to Quaxley. Yeah, it was a little vile- I believe it was a tissue holder. It was a plush- they love plush tissue holders in Japan. <laughs> Let me find it. Yeah. It's like, angry too. It's very cute. Here's a picture of somebody's... from Reddit. Like, it's like devious. That's devious vile plume right there. How do they decide on random shit like that? That's a great question. They do a lot of candy and biscuit and blind bag tins and stuff like that. We never get that over here. They, they don't ever give us food. They don't ever do any of the blind bag stuff, which kind of surprises me. They have uh, blind bag keychains from that Poison Point promo where you could get Toxel, Marini, Gulpin, uh, these nuts, Vile Plume, Claude Sire. I think that's it. I think there was five. It's like, that stuff would be very- would sell very well over here. I don't know, do they have to have, like, choking laws or something that are preventing them from bringing them over? I don't know. The Gibble Toothbrush Holder? I have one ordered. 
Yeah, that was another good promo. I was very sad though, chat. I put in a Japanese Pokemon Center order and the Trap Hinge stapler was sold out. Devastating. The, the Japanese Pokemon Center has a restock problem just like we have over here. There was a cute Tatsugiri promo that had like a bunch of sushi accessories and there was a Tatsugiri rice paddle that I wanted to get and it's been sold out. It instantly sold out and has not come back in stock. Because the rice paddle I have is like getting kind of torn up. Oh, I would love to use a Tatsugiri rice paddle, but alas. No Gamba. I mean, they even do blind bag shirts. That's the thing that always cracks me up. <laughs> the Japanese Pokemon Center has so many blind bag items. They even have blind bag shirts. They had a really fun promo with Golden Go and Tinkaton and uh, Toucanon was in there. See, sometimes they throw random weird Pokemon a bone. <laughs> it isn't always the Gengar Lucario party, Charizard party. I actually think we get more Charizard merch over here in the West than, than they do over there. But it had, uh, there was a, a Spindo was in there too. Like, when, geez, I can't think of the last time I've seen Spinda get any merchandise. But there was this really cute, like, Spinda washi tape. Where it's just a line of Spinda dancing. And then there was a cute sweatshirt too that had, that had Spinda on it. But their, their clothes are expensive. All their sweatshirts are like 8,000 yen which is like 60 bucks USD. It was pretty cute though. So they've had some, they've had, you know, I'll give them that. They've had some pretty decent promos lately. Still waiting for my Golden Go plush though. <laughs> I have... Two gimme ghouls, no golden go. Oh, speaking of blind bag chat, that, that golden go two cannon promo, I ordered a blind bag plate. <laughs> it was like 800 yen, so it's like five bucks. I'm hoping for golden go. We'll see. I could get Badoo, I could get Pikachu, Toucanon, Tinkaton. Seven forty. Ooh, cha ching. Yeah, I, stuff like that is why I always try to keep tags on, on my plushes. Unless it's like, uh, my- the ditto plush that sits on my pillow. Ugh, the Amer- the US Pokemon Center plush tags are god-awful. They're huge, cardboard, ugly things. And they're just the same static tag for everything. It's not like the Japanese plushies that all specifically get a tag made for them.
The worst is for polka dolls. They barely make polka dolls anymore, but back in the day, they would crank out a ton. And the, the Japanese polka doll tags are so charming and cute. They have like a chibi polka doll artwork on them. They just don't bring that over here at all. They also do a lot of really cute stickers. Like, I can't believe we don't get more stickers over here. Like, where's the stationery? <laughs> Where the frick is the stationery? They made a sticker for every Gen 9 Pokemon. I have a few. I have, let's see, who do I have? They're right next to me in my... I have... Wo Chien. <laughs> I have Wo Chien and I have Gimme Ghoul, I think. And I just ordered... Okay, I have Roaring Moon, Gimme Ghoul, and Wo Chien. And they're just like nice stickers that cost 300 yen. So like... A few bucks. What do I do with my stationery? I look at it. <laughs> I hoard it like a stationary dragon. I don't know, part of me wishes I could do- I could get more into, like, planners and stuff like that. If I- if I had, like, maybe if I had a laptop or something, I- I could put a bunch of stickers on it. But at the same time, it would hurt me. <laughs> it would deeply hurt me to use them. I have a really great sticker that I ordered. From Japan of G Max Pikachu. And it's just an absolute chunky unit, and it's so cute. <laughs> G Max Pikachu is such a delight. They barely made any merchandise for G Max Pokemon. That's insane. They made a sticker for every Terrastalized Pokemon, and they're like super holographic. I didn't buy any of those because. I I don't know, I guess I'm not the biggest... I guess they're pretty, but... Do I need to have, like, a in-game screenshot of Tinkaton terrestrialized as a sticker? Not really. A scrapbook? I don't know. I, I just like to have to have them. I like to look at them. Maybe one day I can do, like, a display or magically become invested in, like, journaling or something. I have a few pens from the Japanese Pokemon Center back when, uh... Geez, y'all remember the, uh, the, the stitch line that they had? The fancy expensive shirts that they would make and were making up until kind of recently and then the company just shut down out of nowhere and it all vanished? I have a Fralligator in a Tyranitar print pen. Stationery is usually really cheap, too, which is nice. It doesn't take a life savings investment to buy a pen or a pencil or some stickers. Nineties kid hoarder tendencies. I haven't heard that one before.
is a little bit laggy. Jeez. Yeah, Tyler, I don't know what happened there. They were literally releasing Gen 4 designs, and then overnight the company just shut down. That was so weird. How many people lost their jobs? That's terrible. All 90s stuff. Man, do kids these days not have any of that anymore? Truly a bummer. There's a fine line with collecting where it, like when I say hoarding, I'm jesting. I don't I don't have I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> For real, for real. I try not to have, like... That's one of my... I, I don't want to have, like, a junky... Like, a collection that just looks like junk. They all have iPads. Yeah. <laughs> Digital goods. Is that shiny? No. Oh, hey. I was surrounded by Oshawott. Who Penny's mom is. In one of the trainer cards for Peony, you can see her. She just kind of looks like a generic lady. Oshawa shakes. <laughs> when you encounter it in a battle, it, it, it shakes. How did I get my shiny before I whittled the outbreak down and had better odds? It really just kind of be like that. <laughs> Speaking of figures, chat, I did order the newest, uh, chocolate egg set from, from Pokemon, from Fruta, so... I might open that on stream. I'm gonna wanna pull Gimme Ghoul. Also, I know who the secret is. <laughs> the secret is... The Cheddars. The Cheddars with one baby. That is the secret. It's a pretty good secret, honestly. 
I would be excited if I pulled the Cheddars with one bonus Bab. Tandem Mouse is in the set, but I guess it's Mouse, mouse Hold is the secret with one baby. At least I didn't put, like, Liko's head in the set, like the Ash set I opened. <laughs> Forced to pull Ash and go. Yuck. Yeah, Mousehold showed up in VGC before... more recent formats allowed more strong Pokémon in. Population Bomb is pretty good. There's also a Remint set coming out that has Golden Go. That'll be my first, like, Golden Go quote-unquote figure. Live to pull the Cheddars, forced to pull Ash and Go. Real. Liko is in an upcoming Kid Figure set from Bandai. Kid Figure meaning... Uh, they're hollow finger puppets, but they're figures. There is a Gimme Ghoul in that set, though. I'm not buying the whole set, though. I'll just buy Gimme Ghoul separately. Gimme Ghoul is getting merchandise, but it's not, like, overwhelming. That's that's the right that's like the right that's exactly what you want. You want you want your favorite to get merchandise but not like too much. <laughs> not too much to the point where it's like, "Oh no." I've been uh, collecting Esper since Gen 6, but they've made Esper part of uh I guess it's Tommy's line for like kids poke place and so esper has gotten like 50 billion things lately and i just can't keep up well chat oh i should go heal let me heal and we'll take ashawat out for a little walk ashawat You don't get- Polly's getting nothing these days, Tyler. You're in the trenches. Figma or Nendroid, Cerule Edge. They really don't release tons of Pokemon Nendroids anymore. We got a few during, like, Gen 7, but... And the Figmas are usually just... Gloria or Victor. Every day I manifest a, a Chris Kotobokia figure. That sure would be nice. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, Oshawott is so fucking cute! His little footsteps! <laughs> oh my god. This right here is the perfect specimen. You might not like it, but this is what peak Pokemon looks like. <laughs> Holy shit. Asha, Asha, what? The pose really makes or breaks the Kotobokiya. It does, Cacturn. A lot of the a lot of the poses, like especially like May, it's, it's like looks like your their backs are 
Like, where's your spine? Why are you contorted like this? Making my way downtown, it's an Oshawott, Oshawott, Oshawott. What's up, Braylon? You're just in time for the end of the stream. <laughs> Congrats on the Yanma. That's a great shiny. I like your uh, bisexual colored shorts, sir. He is. <laughs> They've only ever done starters for the Kotobokiya figures, but my dream would be like Chris and Suicune. Oh man. I don't think they'd ever do Suicune, but that would be the dream. Okay. I have to evolve this Solosis into Delusion real quick, chat. But you evolve at what level? I hate saying this Pokemon's name. Duo Ujin. Duo Ujin. 41! Mm. Typical Gen 5. Oh, it evolves into Reuniclus at 41. 32 for Duo Ujin. My bad. Gosh, that's a really dreadful shiny, chat. That's not... That's not a good shiny. I had to just double check that it was actually shiny. That's bad! It used to look way more blue. They massacred our boy. Alright, so I needed to evolve. Is that it? No. I don't think I need to look up Trumbeak. I'm pretty sure it'll be very soon. <laughs> Trumbeak. That's not a great shiny either. I'm saving two cannon. For later. I won't get two cannon off stream. Do don't worry. Okay, Trumbeak shiny is much better. Pikapex is rancid. I got Pikapex specifically because I did not want to do an outbreak for it. <laughs> I did not want to do an outbreak for it. You can see there's a few Pokemon here that I tactically made sure. Like. Ooh, yucky. No good. Scraggy. Bad shiny. <laughs> Snubbles is great, but I have never seen a Snubble outbreak. I've seen Gramble. I still need to get Gramble. Okay, so I'll still need two cannon. I, th I swore I had Feebas from before, but... I got Victory Bell, who's... Honestly, that's a great shiny. But Bellsprout, I'd have to get Bellsprout or Weepin' Bell, so... I got Sinistra. This Pokemon Shiny is rancid, by the way. This is, a, this is one of the gen's worst Shinies. I do not like this Shiny at all. So I need to get Polchageist. But I got Sinistra, so... I got Corefish, because why not? Ooh, man, Seals is so not good. Ducklets is good. Man, I have box 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, jeez. 
Yikes, I'm gonna run out of space soon. This is no good. <laughs> this is no good. Not a fan- not a fan of the Sinister Line- Yeah! I really hate the name. I can never rem- I hate the fact that they reverse the names. It's gonna forever make me question Poltegeist, Sinist- 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 Poltegeist. Sinistra Polchegeist. Polchegeist Sinist- I hate it. I, convoluted ass names. The shinies I got tonight, I got Tinka Tough. And a second Tinkatuff that I evolved into Tinkaton. And an Oshawott. So three very good ones. And then I did a, a few raids. Here's that awful Mandy Buzz. I went back in. I brought Kyogre the second time to this raid and it was hard as hell. Mandy Buzz is no joke. But I caught her in a love ball. I I spared a love ball for, for Mandy Buzz. I think I still need Vullaby. So, I tried to get a few of the annoying ones out of the way. <laughs> Am I gonna do the baby Pokemon outbreaks? Probably. Just for a YouTube video, I will. I will probably do the, the baby outbreaks this weekend just for a YouTube video. See if we can get any of the ones with with marks. Happy birthday. Um Yeah, tomorrow Tyler and I are gonna be doing X and Y. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say there. Tomorrow, Tyler and I are going to be doing X and Y chat. It's going to be a comfy, casual playthrough. We're going to be using some weird Pokemon that we've never used before. I'm going to be... <laughs> We're going to be talking to Trevor and Tierno chat. I hope you're all excited. Live Trevor and Tierno reaction. So we'll do X and Y for a few days, and then we'll do the Babs this weekend. So... Those games were fighting. Right. <laughs> I should really. I should have a bingo for that, Justin. Those games were my childhood. I love them. As, as they say as I'm trashing them. <laughs> that happened with Pokemon Conquest so much. Oh my god. Ugh. But yeah, check out the Discord. I really need to figure out why Stream Elements broke my bot. Anyway, thanks for chilling tonight, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the follows and the resubs, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I'll uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow for some Pokemon X and Y. Who would have thought? Not me!